So, an old white woman has told men that they should be in their homes, safe and sound, by 6 p.m. every night. They are going insane. <music> Having a defence available to householders defending themselves, but not to women in abusive relationships, defending themselves against someone they know can be dangerous and violent towards them, is discriminatory. And in the week that the woman, Sarah Everard, uh, was abducted and we suppose killed because remains have been found in a woodland in Kent, I would argue that at the next opportunity for any bill that's appropriate, I might actually put in an amendment to create a curfew for men on the streets after 6 p.m., which I feel would make women a lot safer. And discrimination of all kinds would be lessened. Nigel Farage's toupee, it just went whoop, flipped, flipped. My goodness. He described her as deranged on Twitter. His toupee just he was gone. <laughs> what is the world coming to? Men curfewed. Oh Lord, oh Jesus. <laughs> Save us all. <laughs> anyway, so this video is actually in response to a video released and uploaded by Abba and Preach on their YouTube channel. I definitely recommend watching it. If you haven't, I'm sure a lot of people have. Um, it's. I mean, they're great YouTubers, I'm subscribed to them, I love their content, even if I don't agree with much of it, I find it very informative, very educational, very insightful, and very, um, humbling. <laughs> but, um, in this instance, I was not on board, and I was also not terribly impressed. I think they could have provided a more sophisticated and more thought-out response. I don't think that was so because they have changed their schedule in which they're uploading, I think, daily at the moment. And this video was also only about seven and a half minutes long. So they didn't dedicate a lot of time to it. And I think this emphasizes my point and also proves the point that Baroness Jones was trying to make. So I'm going to read a statement that uh, Baroness Jones released yesterday on March 12th in or on the House website. It's unacceptable that women are forced to police their own behaviour because men can't police theirs. My suggestion for a 6pm curfew for men incends people far more than the police telling women not to go out alone. It speaks volumes of our victim blaming culture. It would be nice to think that everyone who has got worked up about my suggestion that we put a 6pm curfew on men was even more incensed by the police actually going round to people's houses in the days after Sarah Everard's abduction and advising women not to go out alone in the evening. Judging from some comments in my inbox, that is not the reality. There is little understanding amongst a lot of men about the victim blaming culture where women are constantly being told where not to walk, what not to wear and what not to do. One of the scariest things about the murder of Sarah, and I really feel for her family, is that she was doing all of that. Walking along a busy road, staying connected with her phone, sensible shoes, bright clothes, heading straight home. None of it stopped her being killed. By raising the idea of a male curfew in the Lords, I wanted to draw attention to the police advice and turn it on its head, thus not being literal. By raising the idea of a male curfew in the Lords, I wanted to draw attention to the police advice and turn it on its head. Unsurprisingly, there are a lot of men out there who can't cope with this upside down world, where the starting point of a conversation about women's safety is the problem of violent and misogynistic men. This is not to say that all men are monsters, but women understand that some men are capable of rape, sexual assault and violence. And boy, in the UK, after a night out, with the extent of binge drinking that Britons do, that is, the likelihood of that is increased even more. Guaranteed. First-hand experience of just walking past it. It is petrifying. As of Thursday lunchtime, six women and a little girl have been killed since Sarah Everard disappeared. 
A survey out this week found that among women aged 18 to 24, 97% said they had been sexually harassed. And that was, I think, released by the UN, UN Women. And this is on a global scale, a global scale. So there's only 3% of women who have not experienced sexual harassment in their life. That's fucking disgusting. While 80% of all women had experienced sexual harassment in public spaces. Now either there's a small minority of men who are busy intimidating women 24 seven, or this is way more widespread than men like to own up to. The problem is that women can rarely tell which man is a good guy and which isn't. So women have become wary and self-protective. Women police their own actions because men can't police theirs. That is actually a very good statement. And I actually read in <laughs> of all of all publications, I read uh, Glamour magazine. Never thought I'd be reading Glamour. It's not really my thing, but you know what? <laughs> and it was actually a really, really good quote that actually really resonates with that. In the concluding paragraph of this article, written two days ago by Ali Pantoni, I believe I'm pronouncing it correctly, in Glamour magazine, it's actually a very interesting piece. I'm actually I might subscribe to Glamour after this. I'm I'm well impressed. You see, this is this is this is a learning point. A learning point, I think. Um, never judge a book by its cover. Similarly, to never judge a little snippet that you get from an entire speech and an entire point, and claim that someone is being literal about a point that they are making. Ali writes in her conclusion, adding on to this. So. Men, this is on you. Instead of using victim blaming language as a way to justify violence against women, ask why we exist in a world in which every woman and girl lives in fear. Ask why almost all women know a victim of rape, but no men know a rapist. I'd never actually thought of that myself and thinking about that now, very interesting. My suggestion for a male curfew, not a Green Party policy, by the way, as a better alternative than women being told not to go out alone was ironic. But I'm sure there are much more positive ideas out there and I would love to hear them. Only I want to hear men discussing them rather than women only. This is, after all, a problem of male culture. Educating our young to respect women is a good start at school and at home, but it isn't enough. We need to deal with domestic abuse and what children experience in their home environments, which is what the Lords has been discussing productively for the last few weeks. We need to deal with the entire failure of the police and criminal justice system in dealing with rape. A 1% success rate for any other crime would have been dealt with years ago. That is true. Above all, we need to make misogyny a hate crime and start to change the culture that seeks to keep women in their place with abuse and intimidation. Finally, can I say a big thank you for all the positive feedback I've had from both women and from men. The debate is changing and it's great to see people coming together to organise the Reclaim the Streets protest at Clapham Common, um, which sort of is the backdrop of this entire conversation. In a week when the names of all the women killed by men was again read out in Parliament by Jess Phillips, she's a Labour member of Parliament, she actually has on two occasions now, read out a list of all the women in the UK who have been killed by men. Men primarily who are in their intimate lives. And it is heartbreaking and it is shocking. In a week when the names of all the women killed by men was again read out in Parliament, these are sad and warring times, but I hope this will be a turning point and the list of the dead will get shorter each year. Right, that was her statement, and I think it was a very good statement. It is very unfortunate that she had to come out with a statement after this, and I think she does make a good point. I think if a curfew was literally enforced, it would definitely not be something that worked. <laughs> it really wouldn't, but it wouldn't work because it wouldn't address the issue of behavior. And I think that's the point that Baroness Jones was actually making. Sarah Everard did everything right. She was doing everything right. She was self-policing herself in order to ensure that she got home safely at 9.30 at night, which isn't even that late. Yet she was still murdered. She did everything right and she was still murdered. 
and still to this day, the number of comments and tweets and innuendos in publications that I have recently read in which people are saying, well, what did she expect? Oh, why was she walking alone at 9.30? Why was a woman alone at 9.30 walking? She was doing everything right. She was on a busy street, bright clothes. She was in contact with people. She was walking in the lights. I mean, honestly. And the fact that women have to self-police to such an extent. We curfew ourselves. That's the reality. There is an informal curfew and in a lot of context, even a formal one, especially with young girls, I would say that there is very much a formal curfew relative to that of their male siblings or the male influences that they have in their lives. I think it becomes more informal as you grow up, but it's still there because you've been taught that from a young age. And you do that, but nothing changes. You still experience sexual harassment. You still feel threatened, you're still petrified to go out at night or in the early hours of the morning. So when we suggest that men, in fact, have to be curfewed at 6 p.m. at night, I mean, yes, that can happen, but nothing will change. She's presenting a double standard. And I think it's very telling that the response, primarily from men, I'm specifically talking about Abba and Preach, it's just, it's very telling and it's very interesting that it has sort of become another intellectual weapon <laughs> of sorts to use against pushes toward making women feel safe. I might actually put in an amendment to create a curfew for men on the streets after 6pm, which I feel would make women a lot safer. I think this is actually not a fault of people, I think this is a fault of the media. The media has failed to provide, the British media specifically, has failed to provide context. Context is needed. If you take her comment completely out of the context, which is what has been done here, then yes, it sounds like a very radical, deluded notion. So I completely understand people's immediate reaction being, oh my god, this woman is fucking insane. However, once we've gotten over that, which everybody I feel should have, because believe me, when I first read it, I thought this woman is insane. I then watched the entire speech. I then read about what her committee is doing regarding domestic abuse and the policies and the conversations that they're having in their subcommittees, etc. And I've been doing over the past few weeks and it makes perfect sense now. I get what she's saying. She was making a point. Making a point about double standards. And that's brilliant. That is absolutely brilliant. I tell you, nine out of ten conversations or political debates of sorts, which I have with men, nine out of ten of them, I swear, I will say my piece. I will say my piece uninterrupted with fervour and determination. I will say it proud, I will say it loud. And at the end of it, the man will say, so what you're saying is, and will pick something that he, that he latched onto, something, something he latched onto. He'll take it completely out of the entire breadth of the speech of passion which I gave. He'll take that out and then he'll twist it into a little sort of this little well-wrapped little box of sorts that he's made for himself in order to understand what I actually meant. Because I, 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 I can't, obviously, I can't have meant what I said. I can't have meant anything that I said because I do not know what is coming out of my own brain and mouth. He has to therefore reinterpret it and completely flip it on its head and then it makes sense. And this is the perfect example of that. This is picking up a little part of what was said and being like, you know what? This woman is mad, mental, absolutely deluded, delusional. Oh my goodness. I read a comment, somebody said that she's suffering from dementia, obviously. How pathetic are you? How gross are you? When we live in a world in which 97% of women have experienced 
sexual assault of some kind. Fucking disgusting, I tell you. Really, absolutely disgusting. Petrifying. I'll use myself as a personal example. I have a job where I have to be at work by 4 a.m. every morning. Every morning, 4 a.m. It is pitch dark, I live in a city, and it is terrifying, it really is, because I have to either walk or cycle into work. And if it's raining, sometimes, if I'm brave enough, I'll get a taxi, usually I will not, because too many stories. I don't blame men for not understanding that. I do, however, blame the culture and atmosphere surrounding a woman being out alone, in which the response is, as was the response of the Metropolitan Police in following Sarah Everard's disappearance. They went to the homes of women in the area in Clapham and were telling them to stay at home for their own safety and if they are going out that they must go out with not they mustn't go out alone right so that's great um but again that's that's sort of the example of that double standard of that oh women need to police themselves because uh men can be violent and there are some violent men yet even if you do self-police there's no guarantee that you're not going to be assaulted that you're not going to be harassed that you're not going to be raped that you're not going to be killed it's just that solution doesn't work and the other solution of men having a curfew doesn't work and that was exactly what the baroness was trying to get at in her own way maybe it wasn't clear because obviously people just took it out of context judge my opinions not my character um i would really like to actually hear what everybody else thinks whether you agree with me or not just so happy that you're here so happy that you're listening to what i have to say and i look forward to reading and hearing what you have to say in response thank you very much and i'll see you in the next one